Okay, so very recently, in the last week, I've had almost the same question um, get asked to me three times. Um, so I figured this is probably something that a lot of people are wondering about and why not make a video and share it? So here's the question. Um, I have an interview. I'm trying to gather some data from uh, people in my program or if I'm doing some research and I want to um, randomly choose people to show different sets of questions to, or a different question, okay? So I don't want the data collector to have any control over which questions to show. And I, you know, even from a, from a research standpoint, we kind of want the question that gets asked to the respondent to be random. Many of you might know how to use skip logic and all this kind of things. So we're not talking about skip logic here. We're not talking about um, relevancies and, you know, is this question relevant to this person? We're not making it conditional. Um, what we're doing is we're making a question that is based on a random computer generated number uh, to show a certain question to a person or not. And that could be based on a percentage or something. So um, here is kind of what it looks like. So in here we have a questionnaire and what we're doing is randomly generating a number. Okay, so nobody has control over this. The, the phone that you're running this on or the computer that you're running the survey on will randomly generate a number, okay? And it will be between zero and one, okay? So we have a lot of numbers in there. So then based on this, we're going to assign, um, say a group number to that uh, respondent, okay? So we're gonna say, oh, the computer generated a 0 0.6. So we're gonna generate, uh, or we're gonna put that person in group three, okay? And so then what we're gonna do is say, because this person is in group three, we're gonna show them the question that we want to show to group three respondents. Okay, so we've got a conditional based on group three, but our starting point is a random generation, okay, of numbers. So then we might go through, so like I was just uh, brainstorming, like could we be looking at a hygiene kit or, or something like that? So uh, did you like the comb better or was the toothbrush and toothpaste better? Which product did you prefer? Okay, let's say we preferred the comb or we preferred the toothpaste actually. Um, we gave female hygiene products and soap. What, what was better for, uh, in your household? You know, what was better? Okay. Actually, we preferred the soap or between nail clippers and a comb. What was better? We liked the nail clippers, um, or we liked the female, um, hygiene products or we liked the soap. Um, okay. And so great. You see how that works. But then the next time we go to, uh, do this survey, we're going to, you know, scatter that. Uh, refresh that um, and a new random number is going to be generated. Okay, so this is the next person you're interviewing. It's put them in randomly in a new group um, and then we're gonna ask them that set of questions, okay? And so this is a way that maybe you're doing a, a survey with a lot of people. So maybe you've got 500 people in your survey and you want to get a good sample um, across lots of different questions, but you think maybe your survey is too long or you want to uh, change the order of questions that you show to different people. Um, so you're trying to remove bias somehow, or you're trying to take a lot of questions and maybe only show some of them to some people. So over time you do get a really good um, overview. So the reason you might want to be doing this varies, um, but here is how you do it. So I'm going to show you very quickly the XLS form sitting behind this. Okay. So basically all we have is a couple of uh, formula. So first of all, up the top, we're just going to randomly generate um, a number. Okay. So that's once random. Okay. That's the formula we're going to use. Then what we're going to do is calculate uh, based on that random number, what group maybe are they in? Okay. This is kind of a middle step. You don't have to do this, but I think it makes it a lot clearer um, for people who are reading your form. Okay. So if the number is between zero and 0.25, so that's 25% of people, we're going to put them into group one. If they're, if it's between 25 and 25% and 50%, then they're in group two. If it's 50% to 75%, then it's three, uh, but, and, or else it's group four. Okay. So in this um, scenario, we've actually split it four different groups and they're equal. Okay. There's an equal chance uh, that the random number will fall in any one of those groups. Okay. Cause they're each basically covering 25% of the total um, possible number of answers. If you say, I want to choose 40% of people to show this question, 40% to 60% uh, to, to this other group of people, 
randomly, then you can also say, you know, zero to 60 would be put into group one and then 60 to 100 would be put into uh, group two. So you can also choo change the percentage of people that you put in each group. Okay, so we've we've basically given each of those groups a number one, two, three and four. And then we've we've had we've put four groups of questions. Okay, in this example, one, two, three, four groups of questions. And we only show this group of questions if the group number is one. We show this group of questions if the group number is two. We show this group if it's three and this group if it's four. Okay, and that's kind of what it looks like on the back end. For this example, uh, we've chosen to kind of also put in images so you can kind of see that you can combine, um, you know, a question with actually images and, and uh, you don't, don't always have to base your um, questionnaires on text. And the other thing I've done is I've just put a couple of notes up here. So, you know, this is good for me as the designer, the form designer. It's telling me the randomly generated number is this and your group number is one. Okay. I'm not going to actually show that to um, the data collector in the field. Okay. So what I'm going to do probably before I would um, deploy that, I'll probably just delete, you know, these two things. Okay. These two um, rows. And I think then the other important thing is if you want to randomly generate is you definitely want to know if somebody um, deleted or just chose to refresh, refresh, refresh until they got to a certain um, group of questions that they like to ask. OK, so you don't want to kind of be introducing bias in your um, from your data collector. Uh, so they, you sh they shouldn't be kind of refreshing or uh, regenerating until they get the set of questions they want. So you really want to just work on that with the, the enumerators or your data collectors to train, you know, once the question comes up, then use that, that set of questions. Don't um, kind of go again. Um, and otherwise, I think that kind of shows you how to do it. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully uh, you have a good use case for this. I'd love to know. Um, if you want the example, um, I will leave the example of this XLS form and uh, the little images that I've used in my example for you to download. I'll put the uh, link in the uh, box below. So just go and click the link below, um, head on over and download the XLS form and images if you would like that. Um, otherwise, I will uh, be seeing you around and hopefully if you have any questions about that, uh, leave a comment and we'll get that answered for you. And of course, um, if this is helpful, if you are interested in data collection and data visualization, especially if you are in the humanitarian, international development or social enterprise uh, fields, then I would love to hear from you um, and click subscribe and let's keep in touch. Okay, bye bye. Yeah.